That's so helpful. All right, everybody. We are reached the end of day two, close to the end anyway. Uh, it is time for demos. Mm. So hopefully everybody has um, felt like they've accomplished something, even if that was um, doesn't necessarily look like much on screen. Um, so the way that this is going to work is we are going to um, just jump right in. Um, when you come up here, introduce yourself again, your name, your domain name, and um, share whatever it is you um, accomplished today and um, give us a little bit of a little bit about it there um, if you can present from the computer that's here that's um, gonna be the quickest so if you if it's just showing a web page feel free to use the, the Chromebook up here um, if you need to plug in your computer that's fine we have a Thunderbolt and a MacBook USB-C up here now so uh, and HDMI. Yes. Um, so, uh, who wants to start? Apparently, I want to start. Okay. Um, do you need you need to use your own computer? No, I don't think. No. Great. You're prepared. So we need to yeah, to that's one of the few. Describe your dual demos because normally you're scribing you and you scribing you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So who's in the chat room that can take notes? I just Sebastian was just was just volunteer to do that. Oops, that's not what I wanted. So we've been working on yeah, with yeah. Sven and Sven and Martin, and we worked on on indie auth between between servers. Since we had worked on that in Nuremberg, we wrote in a session, we wrote out a spec, and then afterwards, Aaron and Matan created the Nuremberg dinner document, which is like a, lo a flow through, in the auth flow between servers. So you can have a, so you, for instance, you can have a, have a feed reader that can fetch another person's feed as you, and can in the auth authenticate without you being present and fetch the stuff and we build parts of that flow. So what we left out is the initial, the initial bit is, would be that Martin gives his reader permission to act as him. Yep. We hard coded that because yep. that's just an established in the auth flow. That has happened. And then the automated bits are roughly, the feed reader fetches, fetches my feed or my post, discovers that, uh, that there is authentication required or possible, and then the feed reader goes to his authentication endpoint and asks the authentication endpoint, hey, I, I got permission to do this before. Could you please go to that URL and get me a token with a read scope? And then your, the authentication endpoint talks to my site, talks to my token endpoint, and back and forth. And in the end, we can fetch the yeah. thing. And basically, I, I implemented the page that has a protected post. And Martin built a thing that can fetch posts as him. So let's see if you just open it in a in a browser, that's a private post, and it just says authentication required. Yeah. Well, if you hit uh, fetch here, it goes through the entire lens and yeah. fetches the post. And, <laughs> and what, what I'm very surprised about is that this I actually have to wait because I tell my my endpoint go get a token somehow, and I'll sit here waiting. And I actually expect to see a blinking screen first, waiting for token. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it in any of our tests. So apparently this entire dance happens so fast that my server never has to wait. Whoa. So yeah, so that works really well. And in my back end, that's just, I have, I have files with a YAML header and I just have added an audience property and a list of URLs. And if someone gets a token as one of those URLs over in the auth, 
then they are allowed to see the post. So someone else, someone else now can go to can go to that page and can get a token, because we figure that like especially like for a feed, you might want to, you you might want to authenticate to the feed even even before someone actually has started to post posts that are restricted to you. So I follow Martin's feed, and at some point he decides, hey, I want to make a private post that includes Sven in his audience. I should be able to still to should already be able to authenticate beforehand. So everyone can go to that page and get a token, but only the people that actually are on this list can use that token successfully to get a page. And I, and I started today building this in a browser extension, so you should be able to just go to the URL and have it work. Um, but there, the whole waiting process is a lot harder. Because waiting for a token to be sent back to the browser that doesn't work, so you have to pull a URL mm -hmm. in the background. And at some point this morning, I said, this is not going to happen today. Uh, yeah. I don't have the time to put up that entire flow. Yeah, that's kind of okay. Might, that might still happen, in yeah. which case, this flow gets even more compressed. You log into your browser once, and then your browser can everywhere just log in as you and show the private post immediately. So that's, um, that's what we worked on. Yeah, cool. Yeah, why not? Since we did the intros that way, that seemed to work, right? All right. So I like that you did a demo that involved the secret because uh, my demo is a secret feature on my site that I managed to launch. And it's secret because nothing existing on my site links to it. So you have to know to look for it. So obviously there's a lot of uh, talk about pagination and archives and archive navigation. Uh, I've been working on bits and pieces for a while, so I finally got one more piece built, uh, thanks to working back and forth with Marty. So if you go to any one of my permalinks, this is probably the easiest way to access this feature. Um, you can see that there's these little arrow key navigations, and if there isn't one, then it says you're at the newest item, right? And you can arrow key, flip through, like, <coughs> Kind of almost like hyper cards, like that was kind of the idea. But what's new is that I can go to let's see. actually I can just go there directly, which is I did actually post something today. If you go to the URL and delete all this stuff and just go to the day, uh, this is a day archive. So, uh, which I could use some CSS cleanup or fixing on. Um, but what's new is these arrows right here. So I can now uh, navigate among day archives simply by flipping the arrows, and I cheated and used math and just go through every day regardless of whether there's a post or not. And I don't actually post every day, but if I do, it'll show you all the posts for that day. Um, let's see. Yep, blank, blank. And the fun thing about this is uh, I did actually test to make sure it loops over correctly, uh, the year boundaries. That's always a good edge case, especially for leap years. Um, there's, uh, there's actually no, uh, you might, I don't know if you caught this, but I decided to leave the future as uh, always open. So you can browse into the future and it's empty for now because it's like you don't know, but it's, it's going to be there. Uh, once it's linked, right? I guess they can just keep going, perhaps. Right, my um, future post would show up. So if I actually have a scheduled post in the future, and you happen to navigate to it, then... <laughs> yeah. But when I started posting with this system was the first of uh, uh, 2010, and now you can see it says, what does it say? You're at the oldest day because according to this system, it didn't exist before then. But I will hope to extend that backwards to my previous blog. And then now you can like flip through what were the first things I posted that I then like cross posted to Twitter and all that. So that's that's all I got done. These little two little arrows. On the other ones.
I'm going to have to plug in, sorry. So I just wanted to fix up my website. This is the old one. Um, I started converting it um, to a new sort of uh, static site gen, but I had a lot of features in here like um, critical CSS and um, uh, service workers and other things. I wanted to keep it all working. Uh, this is the new one. So I've implemented most of those uh, features. Um, most of them, unfortunately, are kind of invisible. It was like little things like, uh, what's the, uh, little things like pages that had custom uh, sort of JavaScript stuff injected in them. I needed to to get those working. So now all those scripts are working. Um, what was uh, the service work was another big one, and other embeds uh, and demos. Um, the other one that was a little bit tricky. And it's a little bit visual. So all the code, highlighting and stuff was fixed up. Topography was fixed up. Um, yeah. And these demo pages work again as well. So I'm back to being able to blog again. That's pretty much it. <laughs>
So that was something else I decided I'd, I'd throw in there as redirects before I do anything. Follow redirect and say, okay, the real URL of uh, this web mention is actually over here and now, which is the HTTPS version a lot of the times, uh, and update accordingly. Um, so the uh, so that was deletions, and then the other one was updates. So um, I already handle updates where it's updates to the content. So you've sent me a web mention, and I've grabbed that, great. And then you update your post, and you can send me another web mention. I go, okay, fine, I've got, I replaced the version I've got. But uh, what I don't do, well, normally I was failing to check, what I do is I just say, okay, is this post actually linking to, the, to my post? And if it wasn't, I just wouldn't go any further. What I should actually do is say, okay, did I used to have this in my database of web mentions that were linking to me? And if I used to have it and it no longer links to me, but it's not 404, <laughs> then I should throw it away because that's effectively a spam vector. And interestingly, this post actually has genuine spam. Um, yeah, so uh, there's an escort agency in Nottingham who, when they originally linked to this post, did have a link to this post in their, in their post, right? But they have since removed that, and now it's you know, a post about something else. Uh, I don't want to actually click this link. Uh, is it control click? Yeah, okay. Hmm? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Don't worry. There's none. It's it's fine. It's it's. <laughs> it's it's. I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, it's a control. What am I doing here? Really? Is there not? Okay. Copy link address. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> Click. All right. So now I'm gonna. All right. So that that was in there. It's showing up in the lists. But if you actually go to that URL, which I don't, you know, don't have to do that. It is, it's safe, it's fine. Um, but there is no longer, sorry? I'm happy I'm locked in again. Yeah, there is no longer a link to my post from that uh, site. So now if I sort of rerun that, is it control V to paste? Yes. Okay, good. Um, if I rerun that web mention, it should throw it away now because it's claiming to have a link to me. It's not returning 404 and it doesn't actually have a link to me. Damn it, it's still there. <laughs> All right, got to work on this. Uh, this may be a caching issue. I'll have to. Hmm? Oh, they've gone and upgraded, so it's following the redirect. No, no. No, sorry. Oh, I know. I copied the link that was in the page. But you're right. They may have redirected. Let me just quick last try, and then I'll give up. Uh, see, I, d I couldn't really test this ahead of time because uh, it would it if it deleted it, then I couldn't demo this anymore. And let me see. All right, let's see if that worked. No, it's still there. So I still need to work on this. But the other thing I did, which I can show, is that now on my page, um, I have... Oh, fucking hell, this laptop. Excuse my language. Oh, I've broken an image. Great. So that's not working either. So both the things I wanted to demo are broken. Did you force and support? That's the first thing I said. Then you didn't. Yeah. But, but that would be impossible to test because no human being has ever done that. So, <laughs> so you said I should write a comment to delete it. Uh, yeah, and send the proper header. Um, okay, so I can't show you the image either because that's broken too. So I'll fix that. It's probably something on the Micropub because um, that wasn't show, supposed to show up because um, there's now an Own Your Swarm options to not, be, not have that show up if there's no text um, or photos, but this showed up. So something's going on there.
So hello, my name is Yoshi. This is my website, jkphl.is. Um, I don't know if you remember from yesterday, but I was thinking about working on my RSVP display. I couldn't work the whole day on it, but at least I managed to improve it a little bit. I don't know if you remember how it looked oh, yesterday, yeah. but it looks a little bit prettier today. It's still not perfect. You see there are a couple of strange things going on. This is because of the way I'm uh, extracting um, parts of the page. For example, Utantech, you've got a class attribute on the BR tag. So this kind of confuses it. It should be here, but that's something I need to work on. So it could be, I don't know where, why it's there, but still. I think it's a, uh, it's a, bit, pretty, it's a bit prettier than yesterday. It's not perfect, but I'm quite content with today. It's so much better. That's it. And by the way, at this point, I'm going to say goodbye because I have to leave a little bit early. Um, thanks for being here in Berlin. Hope to see some of you tomorrow. I know I will. And uh, have a nice evening. And um, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for and everyone, give Josie a round of hands for helping organize. <laughs> Including bringing this awesome banner we put up front so people can find the place. And taking care of all the ticketing and stuff. So thank you. So you all should RSVP to his event now. Yeah, because you everyone who's coming to Excel Blitz Cup Conference, Woo. please RSVP to that one as well. Oh. Oh, I broke it. How do I do the regular slash here? Because there are just enough turn for it. Nice. It wasn't my back to the ship. Yeah, it's not that bad. The alt? He links the alt. Control. What, that slash or the other slash? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm Julie, and it looked like I was doing nothing, but I was actually taking and editing all the pictures of you guys. I came here with an entire list of things I wanted to improve on my website, or at least add or fix, <laughs> but I didn't get to doing that. So here's all the pictures of everyone who was here, or almost everyone that was here today, and also yesterday in the albums. Uh, this is uh, Yoshi's uh, agency's account, by the way. This is not my personal one. But you can see all the pictures, and we didn't take a group picture today. Hunt, hunt. <laughs> so yeah, and if if you see any picture you want to have removed, just let me know, and I'll delete it. Should we take one real quick? Or? Afterwards, maybe. Well, Joshi has to leave, right? Can you have to leave? Can you have to leave? Like around fifteen. Okay. I'm going to be for a while. Go demos. See how fast we can get through demos. things today. Um, I started um, doing some changes to my feed. Um, so if you're subscribing to my feed, um, I don't know if it actually works at the moment, but if I publish a new post on my homepage, um, should you get a notification? Probably doesn't work, but um, yeah, that should be all public now. Um, I added a new subscribe button on the homepage, so it's a bit more easy to find out which my feed's available. Um, there's actually another one which I added today. Um, and I put a web ring, I think, at the bottom. Um, how can you simulate going offline on this? Is it possible to say? Well, as the function case. What is the function key? I could just go. Off. Cool. Yeah, the 
just an offline. Okay. So, um, let's get those up. So yeah, I, I had this function already, so it just, whenever um, the connection changes, um, it has an event listener, so every time uh, that changes, then it should go up and can keep try again until it goes back online, it goes away. My demo is a little bit of a cheat because this is not live. Uh, I've been working on porting my static site from Jekyll to um, Hugo for a while. And although I'm almost finished, not quite finished, uh, I was able to knock out a new feature today. And that was great because it w didn't, I didn't have to wait a full like 60 seconds between tweaking a page and having Jekyll finish compiling. Uh, so Hugo is great for that. So talking with Tontech uh, a lot about pagination and archives and how to navigate them. Uh, one quick thing I did was added this uh, little day marker on the side. So if you scroll past several posts, you can see when like I really posted a lot that day or rather Aaron checked me into a lot of places that day. <laughs> uh, and then the next thing I did was um, I have been working on uh, monthly navigation. So I added this sidebar. This uh, is currently unstyled, but um, based on a few different uh, things we found, I kind of like this simple style the best, where we've got a top level list of years, and uh, each of these is a details element, so you can show and hide it. There's no JavaScript or any goofiness with that. And uh, this just indicates like you're looking at this month now, um, but you can kind of you're kind of zoomed in on the year that you're looking at. And you can use these to pop down and look at a different monthly archive. And then uh, the last thing I did was I wanted to make a year archive. So I did. So <laughs> this is just a grid of um, for a given year, uh, each month, if uh, a day has posts, it's darker and it's a link. And then the fun thing here is if you click on it, uh, because I added these day markers, it will actually jump down to that day in my month archive because I currently don't have day like per day archive pages. And I'm not sure I want them because this is probably fine. Uh, so I think that's it. I guess that leaves it to me. I'm stick one of my computers on top of the other one of my computers. <laughs> actually, actually, I was going to. It just I need to be logged in to sort of deal with this. Uh, so you won't even log in on that laptop. <laughs> uh, no, I will. However, it's in guest mode, and I figured it would take too long. That's why I sort of, or maybe it will take too long to get this laptop cooperating. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can do it. Good laptop. Yeah, let's let's all give up on computers now. I know. Oh, that's why it's once again on join displays instead of. Oh, it says it's mirroring somewhere. Clearly, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll try again. No. And the day was going so well. Um, there it is. Dongles again. Anyway, come on. Okay, so I was told this is the year of the reader by someone or many someones. So I've been working on the underlay for a reader that's being worked on by somebody else, or at least a micro sub endpoint. So this is my debugging tool that allows me to test all the things I did. So this is actually one of the more boring things that I've done. One of these, I wanted to be able to take an RSS feed and turn it into a microformats feed so that I could basically read it in a micro sub reader. So this is this week in the indie web um, RSS version. I don't know why it keeps blinking. Um, 
Yeah, we've, 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 covered, we, we've covered the anti-dongle movement. I'll just, yeah, just, just keep watching as it blinks. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to move. So it is basically parsing the, yeah, every time I touch it, the RSS and trying to turn it into the format that Microsub is going to want. And I've also done feed discovery, so in the event that I don't know where the feed is, <laughs> I can find it. Uh, let's see, here's my website. Let's see how many feeds I have. It's, it lets me. So that's how many feeds I have. So the next step is hooking that into all the other code that actually does something impressive, like display it nicely. But one problem at a time. So. There's my whole day. Um, also, apparently, I helped Marty uh, in a uh, mime type problem, unknowingly, by using his site as a test. Was it really my problem? <laughs> since it was your code that couldn't parse my feed. <laughs> yes, but since I was, but since I was using a stock library, who do you? How do you know how many people couldn't read your feed because they didn't expect an X dash RSS? Yes, because they wouldn't read your feed, and therefore they would, yeah. And it, it even works for things that know nothing about the indie web. Um, I did even test with something that is not anywhere near indie web adjacent. I went to a major news publication, these guys. Yeah. Look at how much data they're putting in the feed. Well, I was more going with they seem to have categories, and they mark up everything, even though they don't mark it up in any way. And... Let's see, I think I got Aaron as well. The irony was with Aaron, he, all, his site is entirely micro formats to begin with and is converted to RSS through Granary. So basically I took a feed that was converted from micro formats to RSS and took it back to micro formats. So it should work for as many things as I can throw at it. Unless somebody could think of a really bad RSS feed I could try, I guess that's all I have to show other than five bug fixes I did beforehand to make some people happy. Oh. Flyer connects up to here and sneak in here and actually attempt to demo something that's not on my site, which is Jeremy's site. No, not yet, but I'm interrupting to, since Jeremy claimed no one does this, I felt like I had to like, So that, yeah, there is at least one site that implements deletes. Let's see if I can figure this out. And mirror, built-in display. Okay, so this is Jeremy's infamous testing web mentioned site. If you scroll to the bottom, assuming you've gotten the most recent version, you'll see this comment saying, send you a comment just so I can delete it. Mm -hmm. At 3.32 uh, p.m. I don't know what time zone that is. Oh, okay. But if you click through to that comment, let's see, one of these is a permalink, right? Let's see, let's see if this works. It's gone. In fact, you can go and ask Firefox what was the uh, page info? There we go. Page info. That is Fortan gone. See, it's returning Fortan gone like it's supposed to. Now, now for the t actual test. If we go back to Jeremy's page. <laughs> And we try and ping again, what's going to happen?
Oh. Okay. Sorry for that interruption. You resume your regularly scheduled row by row demo. I'll try to use the filter thing. Yes. Um, I didn't do anything fancy. Um, I'm Peter. I have this PeterModder.net. And what happened is that. I'll get back to this. Um, um, so what happened is that I had pagination, which was just splitting up every 42, uh, paid, uh, 42 entries because 42 is life, the universe, and everything. Uh, and it sounded about good when I did it. So instead of that, I ended up doing, oh, this is long, um, year-based pagination because I don't actually post that much. And that, that's everything that's weird is in under notes and notes doesn't show up on my main feed so I was able to split this the heaviest of all of this is under photos and I think 2016 which and my my break your Chromebook sorry um, is about 450 kilobytes of HTML and about 10 something megabytes of photographs so this is a complete yearly archive of that category now what I'm not happy with is how it looks because this indicates that I have 2017 pages and I have to come up with something else because I don't like it um, but it works so yearly archives actually works the other thing that's completely invisible is how this site marked up this is when I'm breaking it um, so someone came up with the idea that we should be using properties as well not just ordinary things so if I did this correctly then every single age entry is now has property as well and so everything is mirrored and it should be used as a test entry for everyone who wants to use it as a test entry and I did something else what did I do um, there is something else I know I can't recall what did I do uh, apart from this so yeah I also have the few people out there and Oh, it really bothers me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I figured out that is the most important takeaway from the whole weekend is that you can have single letter runic domain names. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Okay. Yep, uh, that's mostly what I've. I... Pagination, like a format. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Okay, let's, let's just. This is annoying. Um, Berlin archives. Uh, oh yes, events. So I actually added a, a miniature event uh, support for. Mm, come on, come on, come on. To uh, one of my journal entries, which was this one, and in the end, I didn't actually do anything quite useful with it. But in the bottom. Um, <coughs> you will see a trip details which is properly marked up as microformat so this is an event the whole thing becomes an event not just an age entry with a start and an end date and a basic text location and the next thing I would probably want to do is uh, trip or track details but that's that's way in the future that's it oh Sorry. Uh, so the, the, the face I made, um, there is a team switcher up here, uh, which turns the whole thing uh, dark and light. And by default, it should show dark, except if this thing actually supports media queries for dark and light teams, in which case it should change to light, but I couldn't get this running today. And it should not come up like this unless it's actually working. So I think it's working. <laughs> I'm Tira. Uh, so yesterday I actually brought a domain for my name. Yeah. And after talking to a couple people last night, I decided to try my hand at um, 
building my website with Grov. Never used it before. This is as far as I've gotten with it. <laughs> um, so there's still a lot to do. Um, I've been going back and forth through the demo page of this template and mine and working on that. Um, and then I also was able to set up a social e-reader on my Rooted From Nature site, which is my business site, and on this site as well. Um, so hopefully once I get this done, which might take me quite a bit of time, um, I'll be able to use that. And then I'm looking forward to, I believe somebody said Rose is working on the Micropub for Grav. So yeah, that's what I worked on today. So I've been working on offline things too, and uh, this is a page that uh, I'm going to totally cheat here because it's not actually offline because it's localhost. Uh, uh, no, that one, go, what is going on? Um, Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, so what it is, it is a website uh, and it uh, installs a service worker. So you might have catched it said no for just half a second because that was it was had no service worker. And now it says hi, so it knows that it has a service worker running somewhere. Um, the site also knows, like Callum's does, like that you are offline. So now we're offline because we're in the metro and now we're at home again so we have internet <laughs> um, and I, I have this button here and it would uh, which will ask me to subscribe to notifications so I can click that and it will ask me do you allow notifications so I say yeah that's fine and then yeah I now got an extra button here and it says test so if I click that one I will get a notification I will not get a notification. I will not get a notification. Which means that it's probably already broken. Oh, demo gods. <laughs> um, I will still try and go on. Um, it's weird. Um, if I now... So this is the, the other part is the posting area where I can now post a message. And if I save that one Yes, we will not get a notification on this side because apparently that's wrong. <laughs> not working anymore. And if I refresh that one, yeah. So if if I refresh the page, uh, you see that it's got hello here. Um, it worked better when the notification was there. Okay. So what I actually uh, what it does is the uh, the other side is sending the so the, this one is, um, this one is subscribed to notifications, which means that if I send a notification, uh, it, it is now, uh, it receives that notification and it updates a cache. So I can now type something else like hoi, Dutch hoi. And if I save that and wait a second, and I can actually reloads the cache, which is not going to the network, it's actually looking at its local cache, and then I get hoi. Even if I close this out altogether, and I say something else, and I save that, yes, and then I'll go to off online again, and it's not working, it's, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Sorry, I, I didn't quite understand. How are you counting up 
that it's not only network, it's uh, local cache and then local storage. But those are two different. Uh, no, yeah, I'm. I, it's the same domain. It's the same domain, and it's uh, two interfaces. And what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is uh, hijack the push API. So if notifications comes in two parts, one of them is the ping part, which apparently doesn't work when demoed, and uh, then there is the push API. The push API is actually some kind of callback URL that you can send post requests to. So behind the scenes, it's making post requests calls to Firefox's, uh, like Mozilla's uh, uh, push API, and that message gets back. If I happen to be offline, I will not get that message, uh, and it will wait until. Did I? Is that what we're on? No, because I no, I don't know. Not going to debug it now. But the uh, um, so it will actually uh, have those messages waiting because they're notifications, and I can actually like this thingy here is supposed to toggle the notification, so. Um, if I turn that off, then it, I, I, because there are two separate parts, like the, the showing of the notification and the receiving of the notification, I can actually, without a notification, update the internal cache of the browser so that when I go online again, it will fetch new data for you. And then when I'm, so I'm in the metro and I'm <laughs> uh, outside of the tunnel for once, I will get network. My, uh, the, the mobile phone will fetch the, the data that's currently there. And then I'm offline again, and I can read that because it's in the storage now. It's now in the cache. So that's that's what I was trying to do. But so apparently, something broke. So this is huge because if the browser says it requests for one permission, do you want notification? It's actually requesting two things: the two APIs, the push API, and then the notification API. And it's the push API is the one that matters here. Mm -hmm. Now most people are saying no, I don't want to receive the notifications. But I bet you, if it were would you like to just have the push to like, we can update your cache with new content without annoying you with notifications? A hell of a lot more people would say yes, I'm sure. Like I would. I don't want notifications, but I want this. Mm -hmm. You know, you write your blog post and you're posting and say, on the other side of the world, my cache update mm -hmm. with your new yeah. blog post. So that's I mean, way better that's, than that's that. Right. Otherwise, you use a work process, right? To enable like a push without it. But the software has like to be but it depends oh, on the browser to change it open. So yeah, like pages need to be open. works. This works. It, it should have, it didn't just Service right now, but it on, shouldn't yeah. be it's like. The effect I'm browser. looking for here was that this browser was actually closed, and then I updated the post, and then I opened the browser without internet, so it was not, uh, but it had internet before. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I went offline, and then I opened the browser, and the site still shows because of service workers and offline caching. And it, the page is in the care. That's that's the thing. That that's how far I. I think the pattern he used, where you click the subscribe and then it asks for permissions, may get more people to. You definitely have to do that. Well, that's that's been the problem so far. Is lots of pages just like grab ask for permissions without even like any yeah. interaction, and then people have gotten the habit of saying no, no, go away, stop bothering me. But this even but but then we can customize the message. So all all you could, the dialogue would always ask. You want to grant this website permission to send notifications, and actually, we we don't have any plans to send notifications. We just want permission to be able to, to update push the cache. To your cache. Yeah. So we right. can't edit. We can't ask for just that. But you can put in messaging before yes. you ask for the yes. permission. And, and that's ignore, the key. ignore what it says up there. Here's what we're actually going to do. So I think this is an this, area this area. could be in a reader as well. So your your reader is working in your mobile device, and, yeah. and your reader gets updated with new posts from the back end, and you can read them offline. That's yeah yeah. Cool. Hey. <laughs> Shall I restore the? When I leave first, um, first discussed um, the um, the idea of like basically replacing Flickr with uh, any web components uh, in the morning, 
I first show you the um, the whiteboard content after that. Um, yeah, so uh, the first step we identified a couple of roles like people which, which currently use Flickr and we want to support them. Um, for example, the, the photographers which basically create photos. Some of them organize their photos but also other people may organize their photos and this is a role we call the curator or the collector or things like that. Um, their artifact basically is the concept of a gallery which is a collection of photos and then we have the, the consumers which may want to subscribe to collections or to feeds adding new collections or to individual collections adding new photos. So this is a somewhat recursive concept in this uh, thing. Yeah. And consumers can then subscribe to, to uh, galleries and comment on them. So basically we didn't have so much time so we started with uh, like what is a photo and what is a, a gallery in, in terms of um, yeah it's talking in terms of microformats for example um, and this is not easy to decide so first like an individual photo needs an, a URL for example and then a page which displays the photo and hopefully also metadata, for example, the license, that is very important. And so if you make that one an entry, then this entry has things like the date published and location from which it was uploaded, which is completely different from what the photo itself has. Like it has a different location, for example, the, the date taken and the location taken. So this entry will probably have like some sub element which represents the photo itself. So the digital, the media content. And this can have like not a single URL, but multiple URLs, for example, for a thumbnail, or for the like, full resolution photo, or for different sizes of that photo. Um, yeah, and it has, for example, EXIF data, and also copyright data, which it should carry around whenever someone reuses that. So this is something we, we actually try to, or I try to implement on, on my site. Um, also, the point we discussed was, um, what do we do with tags? And we decided that maybe that's, that's the one who who basically posted the entry of the photo, who decides who has the tags, and the tags are not following the photo around. So uh, tags are attached to, to like an H entry, for example. Um, so what I did was, um, I started, because I didn't have a gallery on my website. Well. <laughs> oh no, it died. Maybe just give me a second. This is somewhat interesting. So, yeah, I'll probably, um, like, probably go to the next one and then I can, can demo the, the page or I can just connect my local, um, local instance of the gallery if, if there's an adapter around. So that it's the, the local instance of the page. Um, so we implemented the, the basic gallery concept annotated with uh, microformats. So for example, this is a featured image. Um, you know that because it's displayed bigger, and the um, individual pages they have a, like a photos page. Like this is basically the the H entry which reflects the photo taken by the photographer. 
but there is also the basically the, the media link, which is the raw JPEG. Um, and we realized something like um, like thumbnails you can use by just appending the size to the URL, so that basically caches once it happened, but um, will um, like scale down on demand. Yeah, and this um, and there is the idea for that. There is Dali putting micro from it in. So let's see who is the author of that picture. We didn't uh, quite use that nesting like that. This, this is an Envy which has like a media thing inside, which has multiple images, but we could add that. But we didn't have the, the micro format to say that this is media content in an entry, or this is an entry about media content. So that you can probably just carry the media content around to another block or copy it if it's um, like Creative Commons and not have the surrounding entry. This could be good for, let's say, if a gallery also contains like external photos. For example, here is a photo from Sven, and it, that basically redirects to, to his page. So, so galleries are basically an, an abstraction for every type of photographic media in this case. So that's, that's what I tried to, to show you. Yeah. I'm not even going to touch the keyboard or anything like that because mine is a tale of woe and <laughs> unhappiness. Um, I, this is actually, despite working in the web industry for 20 years, this is actually the first hackathon I've ever actually been to. Mm -hmm. um, somehow I've always avoided them. I kind of got angry at the concept. Now I've been to one and it's amazing. <laughs> so, um, so I, I also ignored all the rules about this and a uh, bit off um, infinitely more than I could chew. Uh, so something that would probably be about two weeks, two sprints worth of coding for a normal team, I've just tried to do in a day. <laughs> but, right, what I was going to do, hi, I'm Charlie. Um, I was going to try and re-implement the web mention plugin for Craft CMS from version two to version three. And I think I've actually got about halfway with that, amazingly. There's nothing to show at the moment, but having to learn a new PHP framework that I didn't even know the existence of before this, and uh, learn how that one worked, and get through the fact that Craft CMS has absolutely no documentation whatsoever. I think I've done quite well to be up here and not be crying. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. My name is Julia. Um, I uh, set myself the goal of like getting this kind of working by the end of today, <laughs> and uh, I, it, it, it kind of works. So I uh, used the Jekyll theme for the Indie Web, and I started posting from my phone because I got the micro sub and have working. Uh, the only problem is that um, I discovered that uh, if you have one like and then you delete it and then someone else likes it, it doesn't update the, the list on, uh, on um, I forget what it's called, on the service that I was using. And I also, uh, I did most of my playing around over here and just got like lots of stuff, which is really great. And then also it all went onto Twitter. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of works. That's pretty cool. Also, thank you, Charlie, for the poem. <laughs> I'll just leave that up there. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm um, joined the party late. Uh, wasn't here yesterday. And 
arrived only a couple of hours ago. Um, I had very modest ambitions um, that are demoable by what you don't see when you visit my website. And that is hopefully you do not see a security notice that my SSL certificate is expired. So um, <clears throat> basically my cron job for Let's Encrypt was not croning or whatever it was supposed to do. Um, and in trying to update that, apparently I've broken the whole thing because, you know, hmm. <clears throat> yeah, okay, there, it redirects to HTTPS and Yay. it's secure, hooray. Um, and I validated this because I was finally able to log into the wiki again using IndieAuth instead of getting an SSL error. Um, yeah, next time hopefully I will get the actual part of publishing stuff going, but I'm mostly just happy that I got SSL back up and running and I wound up upgrading my server software to the latest Ubuntu in the process. So hopefully next week when the cron job is scheduled to run, I still have an SSL cert. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Frederick. My URL is fmarks.com. Here we go. Um, everybody who was at the last Indie Web Camp in uh, Berlin might remember that I was, uh, at that one I was in a similar situation as Charlie was, where I was trying to do a lot of like technical stuff that didn't really work out in the end. So this time I tried to be smarter and I did the technical stuff before I actually came here. Um, so what I did was I used to run my site on uh, Metasmith, which is a node-based static site generator. And I, before in the webcam, I moved it to 11T, which is very good and works really great out of the box. Also, my site now is automatically deployed to Netlify, which is fun. So whenever I update my GitHub, the site is already uh, updated. So the reason I wanted to do uh, wanted to not spend time with these things is because I wanted to actually have more content on my site because I hadn't written anything for it. And my idea for that was is basically stolen from a friend. Uh, his name is Stefan Judis. And what he does is he has this uh, Today I Learned thing where he sits down every few weeks and writes down something he learned. And I thought that was a good idea because I often come across things that I add to my pocket, which gets like very much out of hand, it doesn't really scale, I never look at it again. But yeah, now I just uh, started uh, to uh, to add some stuff that I found somewhere and that I found interesting to my site as these small links that I can easily update. Um, one thing I, I wanted to do to keep it at least a little bit more indie webby is add the right metadata to my uh, blog post. Turns out there was some disagreement about the way I set up CSS grid and, and the HTML structure that that wanted and the HTML structure that the microformats wanted, which uh, yeah I need to reconcile eventually. But yeah, now I have a pretty now I, now I have a setup where I can easily update my site and add new content to it, and I think that's pretty neat. Thank you. So I've got to switch. I built a microsite for my uh, thoughts about uh, transactions, about the transactions microformat, just uh, laying out the very first sort. Uh, just to give you a very quick overview of the sorts, you can uh, read it all on, the, in, uh, on this microformat uh, microsite, which is currently just a uh, GitHub repo. It's not yet online. I want to make it responsive before I put it online. Um, transactions, commercial transactions are state of change. Uh, we uh, 
transfer either ownership or possession of things and uh, in return we get money or we don't get money, it's for free. Um, we, can, we have a lot of data points, we have the party, the transaction types, the object and uh, in most uh, cases a price and we can already um, reflect some of these data points uh, with micro formats. Uh, we also, but we do have some other data points like type of transaction and um, like for example terms which we cannot really reflect with micro formats as of now. And uh, thus I have some proposals for data structures and data types um, we might think of if we uh, uh, add this as, the, as a microformat. Maybe it's impractical to add this as a microformat. Maybe it's more like uh, along the lines of schema.org. Um, yeah, this is what I've built today. So my name is uh, Jonathan and uh, I was working on HTTPS but it says it's not secure so I'm not really sure what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> and I've also been working on uh, more structured, um, uh, let's see if we can get... Ah yeah, that might get... How do you do the slashes? Is it this one? Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, I'll. I'm not sure why, what's happening. It works on my laptop. So uh, anyway, uh, the other thing that I've been working on is um, uh, structured uh, uh, metadata. So I've been using JSON uh, LD to for the structured metadata. Uh, so that you should you should be able to see that in the source code. Uh, not sure how you get the source code on this laptop. Uh, yeah. So this is what it looks like basically, and also adding some uh, metadata type. Hi, I'm Flo. I also came late. I couldn't make it yesterday. That's my webpage, uh, der Hess, because I'm from this local region from Germany, Hessen. And um, I said, like two years ago, I, I went to the first indie web camp here in Berlin and I figured out that my theme is not very compatible, my WordPress theme with the micro formats. And for now, two years, I plan to, to make it somehow, but I didn't. And sometimes I don't know why. And then I figured out um, there's, I like the concept with this uh, content display patterns that like the microformats has, the, con the content pattern is pretty clear, but my display patterns, so this is where I, where things are broken on my theme. And um, I'm a little bit in this few JS thing. And what I now, there's a idea of higher order components that you add or enrich um, your HTML like the display pattern and then I thought maybe this could be an interesting um, concept to um, to add like the micro or semantic data to my to my template and this is like I started here with the uh, with the width, width thing with the slot scope and 
prompts to to add the data and then I thought like yeah I continue thought this experiment a little bit more further with with semantics renderer like the type geo that it's like for geo location that was the simplest type I, I started with and then I add is microformats is RDFA or is microdata to add it in the with the typ typical HTML and it looks like uh, if you look here in the stuff then you can see uh, the microformat is added and also the uh, microdata and the ADFA and you can also say no or if you remove the attribute in the in the view thing like then you remove also the RDFA microdata and the idea why I've done this is like I also like the atomic design where you create templates and then you, you make the display and then just add the microdata into it or the microformats and I, and I hope if, if it's more easy like this economic to add my microdata to existing UI components maybe I get this done somehow in other applications yep that's it I, I think I want to thank Charlie for this because I'm now going to do an imaginary demo. I want you to imagine a blank screen, a blank web page, and on it is the digit one. Then I type something in, and on it, so, uh, a strange website, on it becomes the digit two. So we have a mag that's, that's wonderful, isn't it? It's incredible. Not quite. What actually happens is the context is uh, on my web server, uh, I have a number of different uh, domains, and it's all been sorted out on the web server itself. And this is causing me some grief because I want to be able to uh, redirect to different places. Alexander pointed out yesterday that, of course, I could always uh, put something on my uh, outer firewall to re relay things. So I've got. So what I've actually done today is play around with RelayD, and uh, be uh, got got a demo implemented, which does just that. I couldn't actually play with my real outer firewall. Because if I made a slight mistake, uh, then my SSH tunnel through to the, the server where I was doing everything from would break. And I'd be completely stuffed and I'd have to go home and fix it. So uh, I didn't actually make any changes. So uh, on the, that, I just did the demo. And so thank you, Charlie, for inspiring my imaginary demo. <laughs> This is the last demo. Oh, yes, great. Um, so I um, did a couple of things today, um, none of which were large, and um, I uh, did not even I did not get very far with my actual large goal. Uh, but I did start today by um, sending a pull request to the PHP microformats parser for um, parsing the microformats. Um, the classes out of the property attribute instead of the class attribute. And um, there's currently one open question that we need to resolve based uh, about how it should work before I would even want to consider merging this. Um, but there are tests. So here is an example of what it could look like now. Um, and there's a test for also making sure that if there's a non microformat value in the property, uh, that it does not get, does not um, conflict. And then same with this one, which is that if they are both there, it uses only the property and not the class. So those are working. That's cool. Um, second thing I did was I did, in fact, add checkboxes to Onir's form. And that, these are the two new ones. So you should be able to check these boxes. And then if you post a check-in that does not contain a photo or text, it will not get sent to your website. I have heard a report that it does not work as expected. So I will look into that. <laughs> I only tested one combination of these things because it turns out you, in order to test this, you have to just check in a lot of times, uh, which is a lot of work. So 
we'll fix it. Um, and uh, the third thing I did was I learned how to make photos look pretty from Julie. So thanks, Julie. Here is a photo that I took that looks kind of like one that Julie took. That was my goal. <laughs> so hopefully I can take photos at any web camps uh, when Julie cannot come. Um, and they will look maybe good. So what do you call this competition? I, I, no, I don't. I don't name them. <laughs> the thing that my actual, my actual large project goal was, this is Teacup Offline, and um, this is so I can, um, when I don't have an internet connection, I can still um, post food and drink logs to my website, and they get stored in the browser and then pushed up later, which that part works, which I did last week. Um, I'm trying to add photo support so that I can actually go and um, add a photo, which is also stored offline. And I got this far, which it renders in the page. And that is something, but it is not very much compared to what is now coming, which is actually dealing, dealing with the file data and munging that around and storing it and then dealing with it. So I will have to save that for the flight home. Maybe I'll get that working on the plane. Um, so that's my demo. And um, Sven, you want to do the two remote demos? Just ask people to post links I can show off. So, and Ke Kevin Marks had for a while a browser extension that can verify well me links in websites. And then, after, and then Martin made a version of that that works locally in the browser because the other one used a remote service. And, it, and now Kevin got around to replacing his with bits of, probably large bits of Martin's code. And it's just a short demo. Mastodon recently added support for Valmy's tools. So that's how it looks in an up-to-date Mastodon instance. If you have Valmy links that are that verify in an old one, it looks like this. But in the old one, you still can use the browser extension. And then it will go through all links that have Valmy on it, fetch in the background in the browser the pages, verify that they link back properly. And and, and of course, you can also use that to verify that the Mastodon instance is actually telling the truth. Because mm -hmm. like as immediately at, mm -hmm. on release, our Balkan, of course, said, hey, on my instance, I can just add these check marks. And most people will probably believe that these check marks that Mastodon shows are real. And the browser extension, you can easily check that they really are. And the second link is, is I can't do it. Retweet tweet from JD. Yeah. Yeah. Tweet formatting. So he he's s s switching back to known from WordPress for at least some of his things, and he's been trying to extend that a bit. So the first thing was there's been uh, from what I understand there's been a plugin by Clever Devil to track videos you've watched, and for now, it only knew movies and TV shows, and of course, many people watch you know, just like videos on YouTube. And his easy thing was, okay, he added that type too, so now he can declare, I watched this video on YouTube. And the other thing is, he's been working on a on a plugin that's added that adds a read post type to known because he wants to track all this known, but he kind of failed and is happy if anyone knows about known and wants to help them. Kevin just added that his extension is in the Chrome store, so anyone who uses right. Chrome can just go and grab it. It's a Firefox version. You can, you can clone the repo and then load it in the Firefox and you can store it. I guess that's the end of the day, then.
Um, and yeah, any other? Um, Anyone get anything done during the demo? Yeah. <laughs> Fix your picture. I will. Let's show that. Is it on your site then? There we go. Which which map service are you thinking of? Uh, Mapbox for the the image on the site for the click through to oh, to the screen map. There you go. All right. Very cool. Um, well, congrats everybody. That was a lot of excellent demos. So. Um, I guess that's the end of the day. Tom, do you have any closing remarks? Um, we do want to get a group photo before everybody leaves, so yes. we'll we'll do that at the, at the, the very end. But um. so I think uh, what we need to do is to pick up uh, any like trash items if we can. Um, we have uh, bins off to the side; they're kind of hidden. It's like very. Uh, Progressive Disclosure UI style of uh, food scraps versus recycling versus other refuse, and you can help with a uh, cleanup of that. Um, dishes and mugs and the dishwashers would be great. Uh, what else am I forgetting, Julia? What else can we do to help make clean the space, like restoring it back to its yeah. previous state? Um, I'm not too sure what to do with the chairs. I think those are good to recycling, but I Monday's the the meeting anyway, right? The, all, okay. Cool. And thank you to Mozilla for sponsoring the space. And pizza today. Um, I don't think we had any other sponsors. Did we? Am I trying to? I don't think so. I think that's it. We lost Joshi. Joshi. And thanks, Yulia, for helping us out with the space and everything. Mm -hmm. That's it. You all should be very proud of yourselves, all the stuff you got done today. Yes? I just remembered. Um, if you can gather the extension cords for uh, me that we used, uh, you can send me some extensions. So uh, that should be fine. Too. Martina asked if the. Okay. So the ones on the floor? Yeah, yeah they were on the floor and around. Okay. So some of them are checked out of my hand and some of them are checked out of Kelly's. So, so you'll figure it out. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, where do you want us for a group photo? That wall? Yeah. The bright, brightly lit wall. Don't let me forget to take that thing as much as you guys hated it. <laughs>